In this lesson, we're going to look at the buffer, which is connected to stutter. So it doesn't do anything when stutter is turned off, uh, but with stutter on, turning the buffer on will change how the stutter behaves. And it does that by determining which part of the sound, which part of the signal is stuttered or repeated. Now, you probably noticed with buffer turned off that if I activate this gesture, which is just the 16th note fixed timing stutter all the way through. And whilst I'm holding down C1 there, all it does is repeat a kick drum over and over. And that's because without buffer turned on, all it does is it repeats or stutters whatever is at the start of the gesture. So at the start of a bar, we have a kick drum. So all it's doing is looping this, this kick drum over and over with a 16th note timing. So if I turn on buffer now, in fact, let's go to the bank and duplicate this gesture and then just drag it onto the next white note here, which is B1. Uh, and now we'll turn on buffer and see what happens when I hold down a note of B1. So now we get the same 16th note repeats, but now it's alternating between kick and snare. And the reason for this is that the buffer's been turned on and it has a grid timing of quarter notes. So what that means is it's now tracking the audio signal. This is a bar, by the way. So if I just zoom into a bar here, it's now tracking the audio signal. And as it moves through, it's changing what's being stuttered every quarter note or every beat. And if you look at our sample here, you can see it's basically got kick, snare, should we just turn automation off, get rid of that line. It's got a kick, snare, kick, snare on each beat. So in essence, all that's happening here is just zoom out so we get, actually I'll change the timing here to 16th so it's easy to see. So if I slice it, all that's happening is it's stuttering this four times and then it's at the next beat, it's switching to this part and then it's stuttering that and then it's switching to this bit and it's stuttering that and so on. So that's the effect that it's creating with the, with the uh, buffer turned on there, turn these back on, with a quarter note timing. So let's now change it to an eighth note timing and see how that sounds. So you can probably hear there, instead of it getting, instead of us getting the four kicks and four snares and four kicks and four snares, now we're getting two kicks, two hats, two snares, two hats, because it's changing what's being stuttered. So just to play the different, the different buffer settings there, first of all, quarter note, Four kicks, four snares, four kicks, four snares. Now if I switch it to eight notes. Two kicks, two hats, two snares, two hats, and so on. Sixteenth note. Now I don't seem to hear anything with that one. And... Maybe you can figure out why that is. And the reason is that the stutter timing, the stutter speed and the grid size are exactly the same. So what that means is they're both set to 16th. So what, the, what happens then is that the buffer is telling this part to repeat, which would happen here. Um, but then when it gets to there, 
it switches to this slice, which it also wants to repeat with the 16th note timing, which it would repeat here. But then when it moves to this one, the buffer's going, oh no, now you need to sam sample this one, now you need to stutter this one, and now you need to stutter this one. <laughs> so when essentially when the grid size and the stutter size are the same, it doesn't do anything. Um, so you need to have a difference there. For example, the stutter needs to be faster than the grid size, because that way it will uh, stutter this twice. So it will repeat this part twice, this part twice, this part twice. Um, but when they're the same, it's not the stutter is not quick enough to have any effect on the on the um, on the buffer size. So yeah, if you if I speed it up now, make it one over thirty two. Get quite a cool effect there, um, and if we go really fast, so yeah, when you get really fast, you get some pretty cool effects, the kind of things you hear with, with delays, very short delays, um, when it goes all kind of gnarly and robotic. So you can do some pretty cool things in the upper regions there, uh, but for now we're going to keep it in the in the slightly lower regions. But, but yeah, one thing to just be mindful of, if you have the grid size and stutter size the same, you won't hear any difference. So obviously this beat hasn't got a hell of a lot going on in it. So I thought it'd be better to work with one that's got a bit more variation and a slightly faster timing uh, with more going on on the 16th and even um, th one of the 32 divisions. So let's sw switch over to this one. I'm just going to loop this first bar and change the tempo because this is a 80 BPM loop. It's from L Train, L Train sample pack from Loop Masters, which is a really nice soulful future beats pack. Here it is without the stutter. So it already sounds like it's got some kind of cool stuttery effects almost just because it's quite a rapid beat. Um, but now let's check it out with eighth initially. In fact, let's go back to quarter note just to help you understand that again. Uh, I'll draw in the stutter as well. So it's on B1. So that's our quarter note. So don't forget it's now uh, changing what it's stuttering every beat. So it's doing this kick and then this snare and then whatever that is <laughs> and whatever that is. Um, so now let's change it to eighth note. Don't forget, with them both set to 16th, we can't hear any difference. You'll notice when I take this out the equation, it's no different. And similar, actually, if you go up higher, sorry, I actually meant to change this one. So it's quite nice, set to 1 over 32. I wouldn't have it occurring all the time, of course. Let's maybe just turn it on for one particular part. Let's just enlarge this as well. So 
That's quite nice. <laughs>